I believe that the word will prick some hearts that they'll come walk with the truth of God. So we're looking, as I said, to start a work here in Sacramento, California. And also we want to expand the work where my brother, Pastor Herr is, that he may continue to reach more of those of the Mongolian uh, nation so they can come walk with the word of God also. I'm after all nations. Eh? Black, white, brown, red, yellow, all nations. It's a blessing. It's a blessing God knows. Amen. All right. Open your Bible anywhere, Williams, and let's go to work and see who we can spar with tonight. In the book of St. Mark, chapter 7, and we'll start <coughs> reading at verse 5. All right. St. Mark, chapter 7, and we're at the fifth verse. Yes. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? Now... You have the tradition of elders, meaning the tradition of men. And I want to take my time because what we want to do tonight, brothers and sisters, thank you, brother. I would say excuse me, but I'm not. <laughs> what I want to do tonight, family, we want to make a comparison with the way things were done in the Bible versus the way things are done in church today. Amen. If you've been following the message on social media, you have heard me say, moreover, follow me in the Bible and compare the teachings of God with what you learn in your church. That's right. Have you noticed the big difference? Amen. What's so strange? Your preacher got a Bible. Yeah. Why he don't see the same thing you see? Problem is, seminary school don't teach Bible. Yeah. Seminary school teach philosophy. That's right. Theology. Yeah. Supposition. Theory. Wherein the word of God bring facts. Yeah. I challenge all philosophers. That's right. I challenge all preachers that preach supposition. Yeah. I don't challenge because I mean. I challenge so people can realize they're being deceived. That's right. You mean to tell me you're going to support a man and help build a so-called church and that man been lying to you all your life? Amen. A lot of time we have confidence in preachers because they're related to us. Yeah. And sometimes we are dedicated because we let our love for family get in the way. Mm -hmm. God church is not a family church. Spirit is thicker than blood here. That's right. We desire our family to be saved. Yes. But we don't put our family over God's word. That's right. When you serve God the right way, you understand if your family is wrong, they got to get right. Amen. Listen at this real good. I want to soak you a little. Listen. Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, mm -hmm. but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, well, hath his eyes prophesied of you hypocrites. <coughs> Wait a minute. What did Jesus call them? Hypocrites. What do you have here in Sacramento, California? Hypocrites. You might as well agree to that. That's right. What is a hypocrite? hypocrite. A hypocrite is one who deliberately fakes, pretend to deceive others. But in the eyes of others, he wants them to see him or her as a Christian. But he know he's nothing but a faker. That's right. Well, that got 99.9 of all the pulpits. Amen. A whole lot of men know what they're telling you is a lie. Yeah. A whole lot of these men know what they're preaching is based upon what they learned from some other bishop. I have had preachers tell me, Pastor Jennings. I know you're preaching the truth and I know what I'm preaching is incorrect. And I've asked them, won't you change? <coughs> they respond to me was my organization, you know, they'll fire me. Mm. Brothers and sisters, a lot of these men know what we're telling is the truth, but the organization is paying them. 
And if they stand for the truth, no income. So, they love for money outweighs they love for God. Because if they love God more than money, you wouldn't care if they stop your pay. No. God said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, the seed big break. God will make provision for his people. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. Listen at this closely. Well, I think Zion's prophesied of you hypocrites. Eh? As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They honor me with their lips. But their heart, far from me. When your heart is far from God, you don't mean what you're doing. That's right. Lip service. And that's what you have in church today, lip service. A lot of people profess they love Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's right. They profess, I love the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They love the part of the scriptures that don't hurt them. That's, right. that's why when the preachers preach things, he preach things that don't hurt you. Right. Like the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Mm -hmm. He's making me lie down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. He restores my soul. But it was, yea, though I walk. Oh, my Lord. Someone to jump up. Cool. Praise him. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. Why? Your feelings ain't hurt. That's right. You see what I'm telling you? That's right. They go get them scriptures that don't hurt your feelings like Noah built an ark. Yeah. And collect animals. Amen. Meshach. Shadrach. And Abednego. None of those scriptures are sin of fine offensive. <laughs> Even a homosexual would jump up and say, praise the Lord. <laughs> eh? That's right. He won't find that offensive. No. But when you start bringing doctrine. Yeah. And some of these weak, good for nothing bums that pose as preachers. Yeah. Have gotten so in love with money until sometime they tell you, I don't mind you speaking at our church, but don't brain doctrine that's right because the preachers know doctrine set things in order that's right a church that don't have the doctrine of god is like a wild house oh yeah anything goes anything. and this is where churches have gotten to now that's right their tradition, tradition. Yeah. they hold tradition more than they hold God everlasting word. Or laying aside the commandment of God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you hear this? Mark chapter 7 now in verse 8. Uh -huh. For laying aside the commandment <coughs> of God, ye hold the tradition of men. How can you be this wicked? Hmm. That you will lay aside what God said mm -hmm. to hold what? Hold the tradition of men. All right, family. Let's expose. The tradition of men. Of men. That's in the UPC. Yeah. It's in the PAW. Mm -hmm. It's in the so-called apostolics. Yeah. It's in the so-called non-denominational. Yeah. It's in the Pentecostal. Yeah. It's in the Baptists. It's in the Buddhists. It's in the Mormons. It's in practically all this stuff. How in the world you become all these different forms of Christians? Mm. Baptist Christian, right across the street, a Methodist church, Methodist Christian, right upstairs, a non-denominational group renting a space, a non-denominational Christian. Amen. In the basement, a Pentecostal group meeting, Pentecostals, Pentecostal Christian. Yeah. This goes to show you how all of this stuff was started by men. That's right. Who set up variety of ways to claim to be a Christian. That's right. Now let me start on you real good. Christian is in the Bible. A Christian is a person who lived like Christ. They was first called Christians at Antioch. But there's not a religion in your Bible that's called Christianity. Come on now. Come on back to Bible. That's right. There's not a religion in the history of the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's called 
Christianity. That's right. I want to say Jesus started Christianity. Listen, if you show me that scripture, I'll move to Sacramento. <laughs> Amen. You show me that scripture that Jesus started Christianity, I call my wife and tell her put the house on the market, tell all seven hour kids move, and I'll make an announcement to headquarters that our new international headquarters church will be in Sacramento, California. Amen. That lets me know I'm going to stay in Philadelphia. That's right. That's right. Well, the question is, how is it? We've been believing this stuff for years. One, you are not allowed to ask questions in your church. These preachers don't believe in you asking no questions. They got this weak teaching. Don't question God. God ain't said that. No. And if I question you, I'm not questioning God. You ain't God. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Don't ever let no preacher tell you you can't question him. Why not? I'm paying tithing. I'm paying offering. I'm helping you build a church. I'm sacrificing my family, my time. And you're going to tell me I can't question what you teach me? Oh. Teaching does two things. It will save you or damn you. That's right. Are you listening to me? Any of you got a pastor and that pastor said it's wrong to question him, you call that devil tonight and bring him here tomorrow and let me question him. I'll make him lick up every lie he told you. They're liars. 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 They try to keep the church all in their ethnic group. An all black church, an all white church, an all Hispanic church. When you got their mindset, you're sinners. Oh, yeah. Where you, when the Jesus come for his people, what do you think? New Jerusalem gonna be broken up like a prison? Lord. A white section? Mm. A black section? A Hispanic section? Oh. One church, one church, wow. one gospel, yeah. killing everybody. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. That's why we encourage believers all around the world. Question your bishop. Question him. And if he tell you, well, the Bible said don't question me, he's a liar. It's a lie. Even when Jesus said, one of you going to betray me. Well, he said, one of you are the devil. Yeah. They all said, including Judas, Jesus. is it I? That's right. <laughs> they questioned him, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why they don't want you to question them and they want you to be ignorant. You see, what, what, what makes a no good policeman get away with abusing his authority and get away with it is because if you don't know the law, you can't stand up for what you know. That's right. But if you know the law, he can't do anything to you and get away with it. That's right. If you know the word of God, a false prophet can't trick you and get away with it. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. For that reason, they don't want you to question them. And if you do ask questions right then, you are labeled a church troublemaker. And then... The preacher, you're going to be the preacher's sermon. You're going to be his topic. That's right. And he may shun members from you. Yeah. But if you got to stand alone, it'll only be for a while. That's right. Because if anyone stands for God, God got followers all over the world. Amen. Are you listening? That's right. I mean, look at all of you that are here. Many of you didn't know each other. But one message. Just one message. Nothing fancy about it. It's an in your face message. Oh, yes. Make you respect God more than you ever respect him. Make you fear God more than you ever feared him. Make you really think about going to hell or going to heaven. That's right. Are you listening? Do you hear God talking? For laying aside the commandment of God. Laying aside the commandment of God. Ye, ye hold, hold the tradition of men. 
Let's look at some men tradition. tradition. And I teach this, God be my helper everywhere we go, mm-hmm. because it's a tough job undoing tradition. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you come out of false churches and you got so much junk in you, yeah. you have to get that stuff pumped out of your soul. That's right. It's like eating poison and your stomach got to get pumped. That's yeah. right. That's why you have to constantly be under the hammer of the gospel to undo what these liars have done. Listen, if you've been taught something for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, that stuff is grounded in you. And sometimes our love for a man or for a organization exceeds our love for God until we won't even admit He's wrong or what I'm in is wrong because we ain't scared of hurting their feelings. Man, I'll break your feelings into dust if it'll keep me out of hell. Oh, yeah. All right, listen. Amen. Let us look at the traditions that we came up in. We was taught. And you probably heard me go through many of this over social media. We was taught that there were seven deacons yeah. in the church. Yeah. And in the book of Acts, that the apostles ordained those seven men, they ordained them seven deacons. Was you ever taught that? Yeah. You were lied to. That was a lie. Read the book of Acts and follow me in your Bible. In the book of Acts, chapter 6, we're starting at verse 1. First of all, the Bible never even called them deacons. No. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Give chapter and verse and follow me. Acts chapter 6, and we're starting at the first verse. All right. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Uh Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them. Now, the twelve which were the apostles called the multitude of the disciples or the followers to them. And said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Yes. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men. All right. Now, here's the apostles giving instructions. Mm -hmm. Look ye out among you seven deacons. Seven men. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The UPC, PAW, the Apostolic, the Pentecostals, the Catholics, the Protestants, the Lutherans, the non-denominational, all of them said, look out among you seven deacons. Look ye out among you seven men. What were they? Of honest report. What else? Full of the Holy Ghost <coughs> uh-huh. and, and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Be quick. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. I want to try to pay attention to whom they chose. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. Uh-huh. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith. Take note of that. Stephen. Mm-hmm. Or... As some Stephen. pronounce in here, Stephen. Stephen. Be quick. A man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And Philip. That's another one I want you to remember. I want you to remember Stephen. I want you to remember Philip. Philip. Be quick. And Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon. <laughs> and Parmenius and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Yes. And they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, uh-huh. they laid their hands they on them. They laid hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. Now, the churches have said, this is where the seven deacons was <laughs> ordained. And that's what they said? Amen. But have you noticed it never said they were deacons? No. Now, one of the seven names was Philip. Philip. And he was one whom the apostles laid hands on and ordained him. That's right. We're going to give Bible what the Bible let us know what Philip was. In the book of Acts chapter 21. Follow me in your Bible. Acts chapter 21 and now in verse 8. Mm-hmm. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. Yes. And we entered into the house of Philip. We entered into the house of Philip. The evangelist. He was what? Philip the evangelist. How did he become that? Which was one of the seven and abode with him. Wait a minute. Philip was one of the who? One of the seven. That was the same Philip that was among the seven that was ordained by the apostles. That's right. The right. Bible never said they were deacons. No, seven men. You know why the churches have taught that? You know where the origins of that lie came from? Theology. Yeah. Seminary school. Mm. Bible never said how many deacons it was in the church. We don't know how many it was. That's right. That's right. The tradition of men tradition says of men. that Peter was crucified head down yeah. and feet up. Feet up. Were you ever taught that in your church? Yeah. Mm. You liar. The Bible ain't never said Peter died that way. No. In fact, Peter's death is not in the Bible. No. 
Tradition of men. Tradition of men. Tradition of men said that Paul died at Nero's chopping block. Hmm. You liar. That's a lie. Paul's death is not in the Bible. That's right. Some of y'all looking at me with goo goo eyes. <laughs> it's not in the Bible. Amen. That's the tradition of men. 99.9 .9 of most of the junk that come across a pulpit don't come out of the Bible. That's right. They come from cemetery school. That's right. Pastor, you know what you mean, seminary? No, cemetery. <laughs> Amen. I want to soak you a little. That's right. <clears throat> That's right. Tradition of men. You're taught that there are five minor prophets and five major. Ain't no Bible ever said that. No. The Bible have never called none of the prophets, major or minor. The Bible just says he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet since the world began. Yeah. Do you see the difference? I see. We want to get rid of mm -hmm. the church. We got some detoxing that got to be done. Oh, yeah. We were taught that there are seven dispensations. Hmm. <laughs> it ain't no Bible ever said that. No. The word dispensation is in the Bible once. Once. Give me the book of Ephesians. In the book of Ephesians, chapter three. Oh, you going to school tonight? You can shout when I. You can shout when I fly to Philadelphia. Amen. <laughs> shout all that false teaching out of you. That's right. I want to soak you a little, so you don't go back to that church no more. If you do go to church, turn your keys in. <laughs> Amen. Let, drop your robe off in your hymn book. And That's the right. bishop wants to know, where you going? Bye. <laughs> All right, hear me. Get the, this. The book of Ephesians chapter 3, we'll start at verse 1. I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. If ye have heard. If you heard. Of the dispensation of the grace of God. Of the God, dispensation of the grace of God that's given, given to, to me for you. Now, the dispensation of the grace means the period of time of God's mercy. mercy. But the Bible at no time said anything about their seven, seven. dispensations. No. Man broke the Bible up in dispensations, then gave it name, innocence, conscience, human government, promise, law, uh, and then he used the scripture grace. and said grace. But then man called, when Jesus come, kingdom of age or white throne of judgment. Right. That's the seminary school titles that they gave it. That's right. Bible ain't never gave it that. No. Jesus said what? For laying aside the commandment of God. Laying aside God's commandment. Ye hold. You in trouble now, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. You in trouble. Yeah. Because many of you here is holding the tradition of men. Ye hold the tradition You're of it. men. You're holding men tradition. That's right. And we're going to see who you can hold tighter. <laughs> God or the tradition of men. Amen. Are you listening to the old man? And he said unto them. Some of you may not be so thankful for Pastor Jennings when I leave here tonight. <coughs> Glory to God, but I'm going to bring you God's tradition. That's right. We must be taught right. That's right. My God, my God made me to stand so firm on this because even I came out of a so-called apostolic church, was raised up in it for years. Yes. God started dealing with me in my young teens. Yeah. When you're in something, you don't know what's wrong when you're in it. Right. The only way you know something is wrong is God start dealing with you while you're in it. That's right. And when your understanding started to come open, you stop participating in things you used to participate in. Yeah. You were taught that when Jesus rose, mm -hmm. Mary preached the first message to the apostles. Yeah. You old liar. That's a lie. Bible ain't never said Mary preached to a pigeon. Amen. You liar. That's a lie. That's a lie. There ain't no different than I come to Sacramento, California, and tell one of the sisters, tell my brothers, they meet me uh, down there on 77th Street, if you got a 77th Street. <laughs> she ain't preaching. No. All you doing is telling them, look, Pastor Jennings said, uh, meet them over there at 77th Street. 
Saul Mary did. did. Jesus said, go tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee and my brother. He go meet go me. into Galilee. Go into Galilee. And there shall they see me. They guess going to see me there. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Huh? Let's just read this. In, in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 28. I'm not making this. Just let's read this. Matthew, chapter 28, and at verse 10. Matthew 28 and 10. I want it to be good for your Jerry Curl head reverend. That's right. Get this. St. Matthew, chapter 28, and we're at the 10th verse. Follow me. At the 9th verse. All right. And as they went to tell his disciples. As they went to tell his disciples. Behold, Jesus met them saying, all Jesus hail. Jesus met them saying, all hail. And they came and held them by the feet and worshiped him. Yes. Then said Jesus unto them. Then said Jesus unto them. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. No, go preach. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Oh, where you get the preaching from? That's right. You don't need an anointing to go tell someone, hey, meet me at Starbucks. <laughs> you don't need an anointing. No, no. <laughs> That's right. Well, That's Pastor right. Jenny, the Bible said Philip had four daughters. Weren't they preachers? No. No. They were prophetess. prophetesses. Prophetesses. It's given to a woman to prophesy by God's permission. And the same and prophesying man. is not preaching. No. Prophesy prophesying is the foretelling of an event that's going to come. God can move on that mother by the spirit of God. And that mother will prophesy according to the moving of the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost will not make none of her actions violate the Bible because God don't make you sin. That's right. That's right. God don't speak against sin and then anoint you to commit an act of sin. No. So if God move on that woman to prophesy, that woman going to prophesy. The Lord says it's going to be an earthquake here in five days. When the Lord, and the Lord move on her to say that, she say it, she's done. That's it. That's she right. sit down. That's right. That's right. She ain't getting up. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Uh-huh. Yeah, all right. Be a fool now. Now, how are you going to be up there loud and boisterous like a man when the Bible have a direct commandment? First Peter. First Peter chapter three, we're at verse four. I'm going to lay some good doctrine with the Bible. Give chapter and verse again. First Peter chapter three, and we're at the fourth verse. First Peter chapter three and verse four says, But let it be the hidden man of the heart and that the, which is let not the, corruptible. Let it be. Get, begin at verse three. At verse three. All right. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning. Of plaiting the hair. Plaiting the hair. And of wearing, wearing of gold. gold or putting, putting on the apparel. apparel. But let it be. Let it be the hidden man of the heart. In that which is not corruptible. Yes. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet Wait spirit. Wait a minute. How did he instruct the women to be? Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. How did God feel about that? Which is in the sight of God of great price. Amen. You was taught that God. Call and send women to preach the gospel. Yeah. I challenge any preacher in the state of California. That's right. God have never called and sent a woman to preach the gospel since he been God. That's right. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? Amen. Well, Pastor Jenner, my wife is a preacher. Your wife is deceived. Yeah. What about my mama? She's deceived. She's deceived. What about my grandma? <laughs> That's right. She's deceived. That's right. Think of it. 11 chapter 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the position of the man and the position of the woman and see where things have changed. Amen. And these men today ain't got no spine. No. They ain't got no board in their back. That's right. Something's wrong with you. That's right. A man that's a real man don't follow a woman. No. And a woman that's a real woman don't want no man to follow her. Amen. Amen. There's a position of order yeah. in the Bible. Oh, yeah. You hear the old troublemaking UP, UPC, and PAW, you that's in these fake Pentecostal and apples and stolid churches. That's right. I'll make you lick everything up in the state of California. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? First Corinthians chapter 11 and we're at verse 3. Come on, son. But I would have you know. I want you to know this. That the head of every man is Christ. I want you to know the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman. And the head of the woman. Is the man. What happened to you, man? Amen. What happened to you? How is it you the head at home? Yeah. Then when you come to church, you slide down to the tail. That's right. Am I right? Amen. What's wrong with you? Amen. What happened to your manhood? Yeah. God set this up. That's right. Not your weak bishop. That's right. Any church in California that got women preaching is a false church. Yeah. Every preacher that endorsed it is a false prophet. Oh, yeah. And if you here today and you endorse it, you're a false prophet. That's right. The head of the woman is the man. You know why you, you know, women, you know why the preachers use you in the pulpit 
they use you to raise money. Right. Because you women raise money better than men. Yeah. They use you. Oh, yeah. You don't have a woman in the Bible that's called the bishop. No. You don't have a woman in the Bible called an evangelist. That's right. You don't have a woman in the Bible called a deaconess. Yeah. You don't have a woman in the Bible called an assistant pastor. That's right. You don't have a woman in the Bible called a bishop. Amen. You don't have a woman in the Bible called a missionary. That's right. What, Pastor Jennings? Give me the fifth chapter, First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 5, and we're starting verse 1. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. I want you to get this. California, mm -hmm. you missionaries out here, yeah. who told you you was a missionary? Yeah. Who gave you the right to be a missionary? That's right. Who gave you that title? What scripture gave you that title? Yeah. Under what authority are you wearing such a title? Go ahead. Go ahead. Missionary Robin, <laughs> missionary Martha, yeah. missionary Stacy. Yes. Let's go to Bible and see what the Bible called the old women mm. and the young sisters. First Timothy chapter five. We'll start at verse one. Follow me. That's why the preachers tell you don't listen to Pastor Jennings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My God, they know this Bible going to rearrange everything. That's we're going to come back to what the word of God said. That's right. And we're going to take men tradition and just push it right down the toilet. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. You see what I You see? <laughs> we, 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 we got the broom of the scriptures. Oh, yes. Huh? That's right. And, and if anything get through the bristles, we're going to back up. <laughs> and come right back again. That's right. Hallelujah. Just like a GPE, G, uh, P, what you call it in your car? GPS. GPS is in your car because you lost. This, what you think this is? Oh, yeah. This is your spiritual GPS system. That's right. Because you're lost. Yeah. Too much men tradition came in the church and you lost your journey towards the kingdom of God. That's right. All that stuff derailed you. Oh, yeah. We want to put you back on the straight path. Yes. Forget about what you've been taught. Yeah. Forget about your love and years in the organization. Mm -hmm. See what the Bible said. What the Bible said, you got to say amen to. That's right. If I truly got the Holy Ghost from heaven, the Holy Ghost in me never fights the Holy Word. No. Even if it hurt me, I'm going to come up to it. That's right. What did it say? First Timothy chapter 5, we'll start at verse 1. Missionary board. Hmm. Junior missionary board. Where do you get this rubbish? Amen. Junior pastors. Junior. Listen, you're not even a junior devil. <laughs> you're just of the devil. That's it. 